This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, hi there, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And be warned, this will be the only on this day that I will be doing until the 14th. But remember, I have done Sports Catastrophe on this day for the past few years for, for certain dates between the 4th and the 14th. But it's just that I've run out of ideas for those days and I went back to my memory bank. And couldn't find anything, so this is what happened. So we start on a tragic note, if you will. It's April, f sorry, March the fourth, nineteen ninety. Loyola Marymount is playing Pepperdine. I believe it was Pepperdine. Obviously, I have to look at things and all that. No, it was Portland. Sorry, I was thinking it was Pepperdine for some odd reason. But anyway, yeah, so it's Pepperdine versus Loyola Marymount in the West Coast Conference Tournament to determine who gets the automatic berth into the 1990 NCAA Tournament. And Hank Gathers, one of the greatest players in Loyola Marymount history, if not the greatest, dare you to fight me on that, and also one of the best players in college in 1990 that could have been a high draft pick. Collapsed on the floor and passed away. Now, I'll give you some context about Hank Gathers because Hank Gathers, you know, is 23. So, Hank Gathers was born in Philadelphia. He looked pretty good and all that. So, the, both him and Bo Kimball, who were friends in high school, got recruited to the to the University of Southern California. Anyway, they were actually told that the area of USC would be by campus is deemed a slum, but Gathers and Kimball, both growing up in bad conditions in Philadelphia, said this was better than what they had. So anyway, they both went to USC and all that. It looked pretty good. Unfortunately, though, a terrible 11 and 17 season happened and all that. Anyway, George Reveling became the new head coach, but unfortunately, he ticked off people by saying that you can't let the Indians run the reservation. You've got to be strong, too. You've got to tell them to exit. Because Gathers, Kimball, and another guy. Tom Lewis. We're not sure about that guy being the new UC coach, so basically they decided to transfer. Kimball and Gathers transferred from USC to Loyola Marymount in Los Angeles, if that's where you want to know. And Lewis would transfer to Pepperdine. Of course, due to the institutional regulations at the time, Gathers and Kimball couldn't play for one season. But, however, when they were allowed to play the next season for the 88 season, they helped them win 28 games and won the West Coast thing and all that. However, in 1989, Gathers went supernova when he became the second player in NCAA history to lead the nation in scoring and rebounding in the same season, 32 and 13, respectively. Xavier McDaniel from Wichita was the first. So, anyway, he looked pretty good and all that. He actually decided, after the 89th season, not to draft, not to go to the NBA draft. So, you know, as a senior in 1990, he was a candidate for National Player of the Year and a lottery pick. So, obviously, you can't figure that out. Anyway, Loyola Marymount had a big head coach by the name Paul Westhead, who would do a fast-paced game plan. Loyola would take many three-point shots and typically shot the ball within 10 seconds of gaining possession. In the NCAA, at that time, it was a 45-second shot clock, so, you know, they had plenty of time. It was a full-court press. Loyola would score over 120 points per game, but the problem was, at times, they gave up, like, over 100 points. Their 122.4 point per game mark is still the highest. And in fact, Loyola Marymount 
cuts the record for highest combined score in a game with 331 points in a 181-150 win over the U.S. International University when they had an NCAA program. Gathers was 6-7 and 2-10. He looked good. The only problem with Gathers is that he had a heart problem. He collapsed when Loyola faced off against UC Santa Barbara December 1989. So he was prescribed a beta blocker. But Gathers said that, you know, the medication affected his play and his thing was cut back. So it was supposed to be 240 milligrams a day, but it was 40 milligrams per day cut out and all that. Gathers missed a couple of games because of the thing, but he struggled with his play. However, he did do some decent moves and all that. He even scored 48 points against LSU when Loyola hosted LSU. With Stanley Roberts and Shaq on that LSU squad. So Gathers' medication was reduced one more time as the WCC tournament neared. In the quarterfinals in Los Angeles, Loyola beat Gonzaga and then took on Portland in the semifinals. He had an alley oop and Loyola was up 25 13. And then he was positioned midcourt and he collapsed. He attempted to get up, but he stopped breathing. So within 30 minutes of him be collapsing on the floor, he died. The worst part was that the closest player to him when he collapsed ended up being current Miami head coach Eric Spolstra. Yes, that guy. So anyway, he stopped breathing and died. So the game was suspended indefinitely after Gathers was taken to the hospital. ESPN would broadcast the Gathers collapse on sports center because the network was at the game recording a fence footage for the championship game because it was going to televise the game the next night. Well, the West Coast Conference did the right thing by canceling the tournament and gave Loyola the automatic bid. Well, they won the regular season title, so they got the automatic bid. So he was buried in Sherham, Pennsylvania, and he had a heart muscle disorder. His family would File a $32 million lawsuit for negligence. They would only get $2.4 million. They would have got more, but I think with the fact that Gathers wanted to cut down his dosage because of his basketball, ruining his basketball play, that kind of was the thing. So, anyway. So, yeah. So... It was huge and all that. So Loyola wasn't sure that they wanted to play in the NCAA tournament. Well, rightfully so. They were given the 11th seed in the West Regional. So it was just like horrific. All that. So yeah, it was just the emotional run by Loyola because they took on New Mexico State and beat them. Hank Gathers' his best friend, Bo Kimball, said he would take a free his first free throw of the game left-handed in honor of Hank because Hank would sometimes shoot his free throws left-handed. And he did. And he did all that. They beat New Mexico State, and then they would take on the defending NCAA champion Michigan and beat them by 34 points, which was a shocker. Took care of, they took care of Alabama in the Sweet 16, but lost to UNLV in the regional final, aka the quarterfinals. So that was huge. You know, Loyola did lose to UCL, uh, um, UNLV, but I mean, still, they got to the quarterfinals. It's just amazing what he could do. Gershkin, Gersten Pavilion was known to Lions fans as Hank's house. In 2000, Kimball's number 30 and Gathers' number 44 would be retired. Oh, that... And it was talked about in the ESPN 30 for 30 series a few ago about Paul Westhead and all that. So 
Uh, anyway, yeah. It's unknown where Hank Gathers would have went to and what his draft position would have been. But still, Hank Gathers' death was just shocking and all that. And fortunately, Loyola Marymount made a Cinderella run to the quarterfinals. So America was cheering for them. Really, they were. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.